yun nga, people saying na, parang ilang rally mo, galit-galit mo talaga kayo, wala na kayong buhay, galit kayo palagi, gano'n. Activism at the end of the day is all about love, you mm-hmm. know. You are fighting out in the streets, under the hot sun, mainit, nagugutaw na sa sunburn ka, minsan may mga pulis na pinupush ba kayo, minsan may fire truck, binawasa kayo ng tubig, di ba? But at the end of the day, you persist in that rally, you persist in the cause that you believe in because you love and understand the people behind the cause. You know? Hello guys, welcome to At The Back Door. Today we're going to talk about activism in the Philippines. If you're new here, I'm your host, Ivana Valista, and today we are joined here by a very passionate activist. Danny. Hi guys, I'm Danny taking up speech communication at the Dilaman and we will be delving into activism in the Philippines for this episode. Alright, so ang pinakauna kong tanong is, bakit ka naging activist? That's a very common question, like as someone who goes to UP, ano talaga ang pinaglalaban mo <laughs> bilang activist? And I think it all boils down to just wanting to experience the best life possible. You know, this is the core of what we do as activists. We always try to fight for human rights, most of all, and of course, to always uplift the voices of the weak and the oppressed. It's not about like being a messianic type of figure where you're the star of the show, you know, but it's more about using the privilege and influence and education that we have, especially in an institution like UP, to help others and uplift their voices and just generally show the public that, you know, we can make a difference. We just have to do it collectively. Isn't it scary to be an activist? It definitely has some scary situations, you know, with red tagging going on, especially since UP is a very, is you know, it's considered as the enemy of the state in a lot of like publications out there. It does have some times where, you know, you're so scared to like go out of your house. You're so scared of being followed by like law enforcement authority. Sometimes I'm scared to like present my ID even at like checkpoints where there's police around there. But what really helps me overcome this fear is that just the passion for serving the people, it's transcending beyond your human feelings of like insecurity, anxiety, and yun nga, like your fear for your safety because, you know, the end goal of everything is not just about you, it's like bigger than you. Sabi yung sabi nila na, you know, you're bigger than the sum of your parts or something. It's like, that's what you hold on to because the ultimate goal here is serving the people, really, at the end of the day. <laughs> So you mentioned na taga UP ka nga and ang dami rin um, like stereotypes or misconceptions na pag taga UP activista and you are so like how what would you say about that? First misconception I think about people from UP with that activists are communists or like activists are terrorists. This comes with like the recent campaign, you know, you see slogans with like activists, not terrorists, right? And I think a lot of this misconception stems from like propaganda we see on media. You know, there is no correlation between your belief in communism versus you being a terrorist versus you being a UP student. It just so happens that we were fortunate enough to have an education that's very enlightening, very liberating, you know. We tend to have a very strong sense of critical thinking and that pushes us to explore more than what we see in the classroom. And that's why, as a UP student, it's also a very big part of our culture to, you know, go out in communities. If you've been to the Diliman campus, we're nearby um, barangays, you know, like Arboretum or like UP Village, we do interact a lot with these people, especially when we do groundwork as part of our activism, right? And it's such a privilege to be able to interact with these kinds of communities, you know, and be a part of their struggle to have their um, challenges be recognized by the government. And I think this is a misconception that we really do have to fight against, not just people from UP Diliman, but all of us, because 
red tagging is a very big issue that doesn't just affect activists. You know, we have celebrities, we have journalists who are being red tagged yeah. right now. Even yung mga nagsa suffer from the government and they voted for these people. Din sila, right? Yeah, yeah. Even like farmers, you know, who are just like trying to make their living, they are red tagged, you know, for wanting to have their land or for wanting to have their wages or the pricing, diba, ng mga goods nila on the market to be like have a better rate, you know. That's why it's like it should be something that's not just limited to us activists, but should be something that we should collectively work on because at the end of the day, anyone could be red tagged. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like Red tagging is limited to activists. Anyone in this room or you watching in the audience could be red tagged at any time by the state, which is why I highly encourage everyone to you know, read up on it and join our collective fight against misinformation, malinformation, all that kind of stuff. Lahat tayo sobrang apektado. Yep. And it's so scary because there are mga activists or, yeah, na, katulad ko kasi na burn out na din ako. Mm -hmm. Parang, normal na lang na may mga namamatay like out in the streets na walang due process alam mo yon normal na sa atin yon and we have to wake up na to hindi siya normal and that's so fuck up na ganto yung sitwasyon natin right now yeah it's definitely like very unfortunate you know that we're in this political climate where people have to fight for their human rights at the price of their safety you know and that's something that's very scary if you're an activist, you know. But that is also the main reason we continue to fight. Kasi if hindi natin ipaglalaban to, sino pa ba yung lalaban nito, di ba? It's like a now or never, and if not you, then who kind of thing. If we don't do this now, the state will just continue to keep at it, you know. So that's why it should always be a pressing and a pressing force. Ika nga ni Newton, di ba? Like, if there's an action, there's an opposite kind of reaction. That's what we try to do. We always fight back persistently, consistently. Okay, let's pause the video. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I just have to tell you about this amazing product called P-Cloud. Did you know that I always have so many pictures on my phone and way too many files on my laptop? Everything around me is running out of space. Then, I found P-Cloud. I can now store all of my files, photos, and music into my pCloud. The cool thing about pCloud is it's cheap, efficient, and I don't have to worry about anyone hacking into my account because the cloud storage is impenetrable. It is the most efficient cloud service out there. In pCloud, I can organize all of my files and have them synced directly from my phone. I can even give my friends access to the files and invite them to. So check out the links down below and let's go back to the video. Ang pinaka sobrang na frustrate ako sa situation is parang ginagaslight pa tayo that it's not happening, <laughs> na mas sumang tao talaga sila. So grabe yung misinformation, yung disinformation. Like, like I think my main question is how do we fight that? It's such it's a huge system uh -huh. and it's I'm just overwhelmed. I think as people you know who are educated, as people who are privileged, I think the burden on fighting these things is a lot on us. And I think one of the challenges that we have to overcome is that sense of elitism, you know, the bourgeoisie kind of sense. We have to conquer that because it's what's preventing us from actually reaching out to the people we need to reach out to. Hindi naman kasi bobo yung masa. You know, it's just that they need people who need to help them realize that they don't deserve the kind of live life that they're living right now. You deserve a roof over your head. You deserve essential goods that are affordable to you. You know, you deserve quality and you affordable health care. Yeah, you deserve <laughs> to live a life that's like the best the government can give you right now. And you know, a lot of people pretend, you know, like parents, there's this sense of elitism that like, oh, kasi I'm from this university or I have this degree, I work this kind of job and like, ang bobo talaga ng mga bumoto and then this and that, you know. We have to conquer that so that we we can help them, you know. It's not, again, it's not about being messianic. It's just about recognizing that you can use your privilege for the better of 
the Filipino people. Our advantage as people who are educated and privileged is that we do have, again, we have access to this education and this information, right? So we have the skills to fact check if the information that we receive is true or not. But these kinds of luxuries are not available to the greater public, right? And that's another thing that we have to consider when we're trying to fight this information. Let's not alienate people by you know calling them bobo or like tanga tanga ka talaga <laughs> kasi you're supporting this person or that. Just setting aside that ego and that pride of being privileged and then lowering yourself and just talking to them in the most normal way possible. Kasi tao sa tao lang. Yeah, tao sa tao lang kasi they just become defensive kasi you're being aggressive, you know? So you have to like lower that ego and then really reach out. That's what we do when we do community work. And it's one of the best things I learned as an activist. It's just like really getting your hands dirty, if, mm-hmm. for the lack of a better term. And like really going out there and reaching out to the people. And don't wait for them to reach out to you. Um, so, paano yun? So, pag nag, ano kayo, um, nag-house to house kayo. Yeah. Pag hindi talaga, sobrang disagree talaga yung tao na kinakausap mo. Do you still pursue that? Or... You still try to open their minds or may mga criteria ba kayo na, ah, okay, ito, hindi na kaya i-persuade. Yeah, we do have some certain criteria that we try to adhere to when we're doing um, campaign work or when talking to people, especially in the context of like the recent elections, right? When you're yeah. trying to campaign for a political candidate that you believe in. But as much as possible, we don't really... We don't do yung mga like very diversive kumbaga na mga tactics of like calling them names, etc. It's just a matter of really explaining to them ano ba yung kayang ibigay ng leader na to sa Pilipinas na hindi kayang mabigay ng iba. And ano bang klaseng Pilipinas yung pwede nating makuha if we vote this kind of leader perhaps. And of course, it's not unusual naman that there will be people who will, you know, Tear the flyer in your face or like maybe throw something at you. It's a very common thing when you're doing gun work, but we don't react aggressively in the same way. We just like try to, you know, keep ourselves safe, of course, at most, but we don't try to retaliate to whatever that they're doing to us. Because at the end of the day, hindi naman yung pinuntanamin dito. We're here to convince people of our cause, of the values that we believe in. So there's that. It's just a matter of like, Controlling yourself, I would say. Pag sinasabi rin kasi yung aktivista dito sa Pilipinas, iniisip agad ng mga tao, yung mga nagrarally na puro galit lang. Alam mo yon na wala silang buhay kundi magalit lang na magalit. Pero ito din yung natutunan ko sa recent na elections. You can't fuel your activism which is hatred for the long run kasi mabuburn out ka talaga. You really have to fight with love. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. Kasi, yun nga, people think na, parang lang rally mo, galit-galit mo talaga kayo, wala na kayong buhay, galit kayo palagi, ganun. But activism at the end of the day is all about love, you know. Mm-hmm. You are fighting out in the streets, under the hot sun, mainit, nagugutom na sa sunburn ka, minsan may mga pulis na pinupush ba kayo, minsan may fire truck na <laughs> binawa sa kayo ng tubig, di ba? But at the end of the day, you persist in that rally, you persist in the cause that you believe in because you love and understand the people behind the cause, you know? People like Chad Bok, for instance, he was such a good example of what it means to be an activist, you know? He graduated with Latin honors in Diliman and then didn't work corporate even if he had such a good record but instead went out to be with the Lumads. That's what it means to genuinely love the cause that you're fighting for. That you're willing to sacrifice a lot of what you have for the cause. It's not about, ano naman, it's not an exploitative kind of thing but it's just that you offer yourself, you know, when true love, kumbaga, but like true love, but not towards a person, towards a people or a host. I think that's what really drives us. Of course, when someone when someone hurts the people or the cause that you love, magagalit ka, mm-hmm. di ba? And that's what pushes us to demand accountability and competence from the government. Kasi yun nga, hindi naman natin deserve to. Hindi natin deserve to mga babae, mga queer people, farmers, fishermen, working class, hindi natin deserve to. And that's why we go out there and tell them that. I've been hearing also sa mga activists din that there are some problematic yeah. activists din. So, 
how do you deal with those like do you call them out may accountability ba from them or yeah definitely i think the great part about the culture in activism is that whenever we have a kakolek na you know, nagkasala or may nagawang hindi tama or mali, we're always the first ones to call them out. And you're calling them out not because you want to cancel them, but because again, it's that love for the collective, you know. You're calling them out because you have to subject them to the same standards and values that the collective is trying to hold itself to. You know, you can't preach about something and not embody it. And that's why we try to address it. There's always internal accountability um, measures that we take in mass organizations. And as much as possible, we do try to do our best when we're trying to correct someone. It's correction, but like not canceling. I think that's such something that like we have to differentiate. Can you remove it? <laughs> so, mga activists that are medyo nabo burn out na, like, do you have like anything to say to them? For those activists out there who might be burned out, just like a lot of us, it's always just about tireless persuasion. Like, tireless not in the sense that, wag kang matulog, wag kang kumain, but tireless that, you know. When you're tired, you have to go rest. When you're hungry, go eat. But at the end of the day, you, we will always be there with you. The revolution will always be with you, and you will always be with the revolution. <laughs> Sounds super corny, but like that's a thing that we say. Now you will always be a part of the greater movement, no matter what part you are in your life, no matter what part you are in your burnout stage. When you're ready to come out, like we will always receive you with loving arms, <laughs> and then, yeah. So just take some time to rest. You know, being an activist is tough, but at the end of the day, just know your colleague is here. <laughs> All right, thank you so so much, Danny, for sharing your knowledge and sa mga nabo burn out na jan. I hope na nari ignite yung passion yung and yung love yung for our country. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. comment kayo down below if you like this video or if you hate this video. Comment kayo down below. At kung nagusto mo yung video na hit that like button and also that notification bell for more content like this. And don't forget mag subscribe kayo sa ating YouTube channel for more content like this one. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye! Even if the work is tough, we always encourage one another to take a break. Pahinga ka muna, me. <laughs> That's what we always say in our group chats. Pahinga muna kayo mga me. Kasi we understand the heaviness of the load, but nonetheless, we acknowledge that everyone needs to rest sometimes. Yes. Tao ka din. Tao ka din. <laughs>